Hey everybody, we're back with another Fix It Friday recap where every Friday our engineering team dedicates time to addressing user requests and quality improvements. For the month of September, I have eight different fixes to show you from voice recording improvements to better markdown editing and smoother UI interactions. So let's dive in. First, unfocused warp windows now have a dimmed top bar. When you have multiple warp windows open, the inactive ones fade their title bars by 45%, making it instantly clear which window is active. This works especially well with solid color themes like Atterberry, though it's more noticeable with backgrounds like Solar Flare or Snowy. But the design team signed off on this as a good balance between clarity and aesthetics, and it really helps with better window management. Now, while I've got two windows open here, let me also show you one of our most requested fixes, which is voice recording behavior. Previously, when you started voice recording and accidentally clicked elsewhere in warp, the recording would completely abort, losing everything you'd set up to that point. Now voice recording is much more forgiving. You can start a recording, click around to different parts of warp or away from warp, and your recording continues uninterrupted until you actually stop it. Number three is that we have improved AI copy functionality. Previously, copying agent mode responses resulted in messy and poorly formatted text. Now when you copy agent mode output, it is automatically formatted as clean markdown with plain text sections that stay readable, code diffs that are properly wrapped in code blocks, and the overall structure is preserved and clean. This makes it really easy to share agent mode results seamlessly in documentation, Slack, or anywhere else. Four is we've improved our split pane divider interaction. The split pane resizer, that thin line between panes, had a hitbox that was just a bit too small, making it frustrating to click and drag for resizing. This fix expands the clickable area, making it much easier to grab and resize your panes without precision clicking. Five is auto suggestion management. You can now see a small X button next to auto suggestions, letting you permanently hide suggestions you don't want to see again. Once you hide a suggestion, the system intelligently regenerates new suggestions to replace the hidden ones. So this way you can train warp to show you only the suggestions you want to see. This feature is configurable so you can turn off the X button in settings if you prefer a cleaner interface. Six is we have improved keyboard shortcuts. You can now bind keystrokes that used to be blocked by Mac OS itself, like command tilde or command escape. This gives you a lot more freedom to set up warp exactly the way you want without running into system level conflicts, especially if you rely on those shortcuts for pain switching or workflow triggers. Seven is live markdown preview updates. So before this fix, when you had a markdown file open in the editor alongside a preview pane, you had to manually click refresh file every time you made changes to see the updated preview. Now, when you save your markdown file, the preview automatically updates to reflect your changes, creating a really seamless live editing experience. Eight is consistent tool tip rendering. So previously, when you hovered over icons throughout Warp's interface, the tooltips would appear with inconsistent alignment. But now when you hover over any icon, all tooltips are consistently left aligned across the entire interface, making Warp's interface feel a lot more polished and predictable. And finally, we now have empty line highlighting. So there's better highlighting behavior for empty lines in the input editor, leading to a better visual treatment in Warp. And that's it. So if you've got quality of life improvements, bugs, or feature requests you'd like to see, we're always listening. So drop a comment on this video, open a GitHub issue, or tag us on Twitter. Thank you for using Warp, and I'll see you in the next Fix It Friday recap.